How's it going, fair adventures? Welcome to episode 2 of AutoCAD for Noobs. A series where I pass on to you guys as much of the AutoCAD knowledge I have acquired over the years. I don't know what that hand gesture was. Anyways, for today's adventure, we are going to learn some advanced line summoning techniques like how to create lines at angles and how to join lines and all that amazing stuff. So let us begin by learning how to create lines at angles first. So if you guys joined me on our last quest, you guys are now level 4 AutoCAD men and have learned the skills of line summoning. If not, you can check out the last AutoCAD video right here and then come back to this video of course. Okay, so to create lines at angles, all you have to do is to create your first point of your line. Now to input your angle, all you got to do is type in the less than symbol or the left pointing angle bracket followed by your desired angle. So if you want a 45 degree angle, just type in angle bracket 45, then click on spacebar to activate your command. And what this does is it locks your line at a 45 degree angle. Now all you got to do is to just type in your desired line length, so let's say 50 millimeters, then click on the spacebar again to finalize your line. And that should do it. You now have a 50 millimeter line at a 45 degree angle. Now, as an exercise to master this skill of angular line degree summoning, we are going to create a square that is tilted at a 45 degree angle. So, ready your line summoning spells, my young adventurers, and follow along. First thing we gotta do is we gotta create a line following the steps I just mentioned a while ago. Okay, now here comes the tricky part where we have to make another line that is the opposite angle of our first line or is at what we level 69 AutoCAD Paladins call a perpendicular line. But no worries guys, it's pretty simple. Just type in angle bracket negative 45 and that should provide you with an opposite angle. Now, just type in your line length and there you go. Now just repeat our first and second line commands and you should be able to create a square similar to this one. What's that? Oh wow! You just leveled up and are now a level 5 AutoCADs man. And you have just acquired the skill of a thousand angles. Nice. Nice. Anyways, there are a ton of easier ways to creating this tilted square. So one of the easiest methods is probably by using one of my favorite spells out there, the mirror command or MI as a shortcut. Okay, so as a demonstration, let's just go ahead and copy our first line from the tilted square we just created. To copy, click on the line, then press CO for copy, then transfer it onto anywhere on our drawing sheet. Wow, you guys just learned another AutoCAD spell just like that. Anyways, let's get back to the mirror spell. Now for the mirror spell to work properly, our ortho mode must be on. You can activate ortho mode by pressing F8 and you should see a prompt above your command line saying ortho mode is on. Again, those who don't know what ortho mode is or what the function keys are, you can go back to our first AutoCAD for Noobs episode and begin your training there. So basically with ortho mode on, all our lines and actions will be locked in a 90 degree axis. Meaning, if we want to move this line with ortho mode on, we can only move it up, down, left, or right. Okay, so now that you guys know that, let us begin. Select the line you want to mirror, then press MI and spacebar to activate your spell. Now when your cursor turns into activated mode, click on one edge of your line where you want to mirror it from. Now just move your mouse accordingly, up or down, or left or right, until the mirrored line goes to the direction that you want it to. Now click on the drawing sheet to lock in our mirror command. Now the mirrored line will vanish but don't worry, just click on the spacebar and your mirrored line should appear out of thin air, like magic. Now to complete our square of tiltedness, just select both of your lines and repeat the mirroring process. And boom, you guys now have just leveled up to level 6 autocadsmanship and you have also acquired the skill, mirror spell. Flameo, young adventurers. Flameo, sir. Flameo. Anywho, I think you guys are now ready for our very first boss dungeon quest. So I challenge you guys to create this shape in the least amount of time using your newly acquired spells. The angle line spell, the copy spell, and the mirror spell. Okay, so for fun, I will create this shape from scratch and I will time myself as to how fast I can do it. And then later in the end of the video, I'm going to reveal the set of commands I used in order to create this. But for now, you guys could just see the version of me without the commands basically. Ah, 
under 30 seconds not too shabby if i could say so myself so if you guys were able to do this shape in under one minute then congratulations guys you have successfully defeated the mirrored ogre and have successfully overcome your first dungeon quest now comment down below your best times and challenge your friends to compete in this dungeon also like this video for added experience points anyways let us move on to some more advanced line manipulation techniques next technique is what i would call stretch basically this command allows you to stretch any line or any shape that you want so for example we have this 50 by 50 square right here and say i want to stretch it so that it's 100 millimeters tall and 50 millimeters wide to do so all we have to do is press s for stretch then spacebar to activate once our cursor turns into this tiny square we can now highlight the side of the square we want to stretch so just highlight the top of the square like so then click on the drawing sheet to finalize your selection now just click on spacebar again to confirm and your cursor should turn back to this plain cross so now all we have to do is to just click on the edge of the square that you want to stretch then drag it upwards and type in how long you want it to stretch 50 millimeters and BAM we now have a 100 by 50 millimeter rectangle now you can also use the stretch command to make things shorter so for example we are going to turn this rectangle we just created into a square so just stretch this side but instead of pulling away from our shape we are going to pull inwards so to do so we just have to drag it and type in how much we want it to move inwards 50 millimeters and done now you can also use this command for lines just do the same procedure and you should be golden also another tip you can stretch lines without using the stretch command just select the line and three grab points should appear so it's this tiny blue square thingies right here you can drag any of the end grab points to either shorten it or lengthen it like so moving on another must know command every beginner must learn is the join command now what this spell does is it lets you connect any lines that you have made as long as they have endpoints that are touching. So for example, we are going to join this one line of the rectangle we made to this adjacent line. All you have to do is to highlight the lines you want to join, press J, then spacebar to activate your command, and voila! You are now a priest and have successfully married those two lines in holy matrimony, never to be separated ever again. Now you can do this to as many lines as you want, so once joined, this whole squiggle is now called a polyline from the root word poly which means many in Greek. Anyways, with that knowledge, I guess you guys are almost a level 7 autocadsman. We just need to learn a few more skills to get you that extra bit of XP to get to level 7. Okay, so now that you guys know how to join lines, let us learn how to unjoin them. So let's say I accidentally joined this whole rectangle right here. Oh no! And then let's just say theoretically that I can't use Ctrl Z anymore for some reason. Now one way to unjoin these lines is to just click on the polyline or shape you want to turn into separate lines. And just type in X which is a shortcut for explode. Now before you press the spacebar and activate the explode command, think about the repercussions of your actions and what you are just about to do. You are about to unjoin a bunch of lines. Think about how they would feel. If they're mad at each other, I guess that's fine, but what if they're friends? <laughs> Anyways, just click on spacebar to activate the explode command and BAM! The rectangle size has now been unjoined. And oh man, you guys just leveled up again. Wow, amazing. You are now a level 7 AutoCADs man. Congratulations on learning the stretch, join, and explode spells. Use it wisely. Now let's get into the last part of today's video. Now this is probably the command I use the most especially when making walls and that is called the offset command or the offset spell offset now basically what the offset command does is it just creates a parallel copy of a line or a shape you make so it's kind of hard to explain let me just show you guys how it works so first let us make a three meter line right here so let's say i want to create another line beside it all i have to do is to activate the offset command by pressing o then spacebar, then type in 150 for our offset distance, then press spacebar again. If you do this correctly, your cursor should turn into a tiny square. So once your cursor is in square mode, select the line you want to offset, then just click on what side of that line you want to offset to. So this spell comes in super useful if you want to make a double line that is perfectly parallel to each other. So take this random squiggly line for example. Let's say I want to make it into a wall that is 150 millimeters thick. 
Now all I have to do is to make sure that all of these lines are connected and that they are a polyline so that when we offset them, all of the lines here will be affected by our offset. So let's just click on the squiggly line right there and apply our offset. Click on that other side and boom, you now have a squiggly wall. So you can also use this for shapes and you can offset as much as you want without having to retype the shortcut. And with that knowledge, I guess you guys should be able to at least create basic floor plans with AutoCAD. So I guess that's all the time we have for today. If you're still watching, congratulations on making it this far into our AutoCAD quest. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below to see more of my AutoCAD for new videos. Thank you, my dudes, for watching. I will see you on our next AutoCAD adventure. Fly in peace!